In this unit, I would like to show you a case study about the work of the British architect Norman Foster. Foster and Partners is currently one of the most successful and prestigious architectural offices in the world. Foster started his career in the 1970s with some very uh, unique and conceptually successful projects. Later, his practice grew to a big international scale and has currently more than 1,000 people working in many countries. Some of the projects that you may be familiar from the office are, for example, the Millennium Bridge in London from the year 2000 that connects the St. Paul's Cathedral and the Tate Modern Gallery. You may also know the Wembley Stadium, again from year 2002 in London, with this big arch covering the large space underneath, forming one of the largest stadiums in the world. The office is well known for designing towers. One of the most successful towers that they designed is the Swiss Red Tower in London from the year 2002 which is headquarters of an international insurance company. The tower is known for being very sustainable and using this airflow to pass the air, the hot air, through the building and take it out uh, near the roof. The building uses diagrid and has oval shape and circular plan. This idea of the diagrid was adopted by Norman Foster and his partners in a project for Hearst Tower in New York City, completed in 2007. In this tower, the architects used diagrid or this diagonal structure, which saves 20% of the steel used for uh, the building. That is not only makes the building more sustainable, but also um, saves significant cost as the structure is one of the most expensive parts of the building. The building was uh, commissioned in the year 2001, right before 9-11, and it was put on hold for some years after 9-11 uh, attacks in New York. Uh, the project was um, for the Hearst uh, Corporation was originally designed in 1926, in Art Deco style by the set designer Joseph Urban. The project was never completed originally, but even uh, in the initial phases, it envisioned a base with a large tower above it. This is why the Landmarks Commission in New York approved the tower by Foster and Partners, because there was already the idea that there would be a tower in this place. The tower is located near Columbus Circle on the corner of Central Park in uh, New York City near Broadway on, on 8th Avenue. The project is near the Time Warner Center and Columbus Circle by SOM and also on the same avenue as the New York Times building by Renzo Piano. The difference between this tower and for example the tower of Renzo Piano is that here, the structure is exposed, is shown in the perimeter. It's in the same plane as the glass facade. While Renzo Piano separates the louvers, separates the ceramic rods in front of the facade and distinguishes it, what is the structure, what is the glass, and what are the metal rods that protect from the sun. The diagrid shape of the structure creates this unique feature in the corners of the building. Sometimes the windows are facing down, sometimes the windows are facing up, and they provide these unique views when one is in the interior and facing the outside. The building has some of the best views in New York City, overseeing the Hudson River, Central Park, and Midtown Manhattan. We will now see a video which was provided especially for our course by the office of Foster and Partners. The lobby of the building was designed by James Carpenter, an architect and designer from New York City, and has this waterfall which features 
a, a water that uh, goes through the building and is used for evaporative cooling. The building is one of the most sustainable buildings in the city, recycles its rainwater, uses renewable energy and minimizes the use of air conditioning. The large lobby is a unique feature in the building. It is the place where the old building, the old facades meets the new building. The two facades are separated and the point of separation, the architects design a large uh, glass facade, big glass windows in the upper part that allow the light to go through and to um, illuminate the public space that is right below it, which is now used as a lobby and as a cafeteria.